OK, and the final item of business uh, this evening is a member's business debate uh, on motion 12850 in the name of Kevin Stewart on 40th anniversary of Volunteers Week. The debate will be concluded without any questions being um, put. But I invite members wishing to speak uh, to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible and invite Kevin Stewart to open the debate around seven minutes. Mr Stewart. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. And it's a great privilege to open this debate celebrating the 40th anniversary of Volunteers Week, uh, and I'd like to thank all members who signed the original motion. Volunteers Week is an annual campaign which takes place uh, from the first Monday in June and consists of thousands of charities and voluntary organisations recognising the contribution of volunteers to our society. As well as a, an opportunity to thank volunteers uh, and recognise the value of their time, passion and skills, Volunteers Week also acts as a chance to inspire others to give volunteering a go. Now, this debate is unlikely to garner a huge amount of media coverage, even though it should. However, I know that it will be reported by Charles Fletcher of Caledonia Media uh, and will be broadcast on community radio stations across Scotland, hopefully including Shmoo FM in Aberdeen. And our community radio stations are largely run by amazing volunteers and they are to be commended for bringing local news, information and entertainment to their locales. Many of Schmoo's volunteers are young people, uh, and in my home city of Aberdeen, youth volunteering is of immense value, with 3,154 young people aged between 12 and 25 undertaking Scottish Government's Saltire Awards for volunteering. The Saltire Awards are national awards endorsed by the Scottish Government and delivered in each local authority area by third sector interfaces to recognise the contribution that young people make volunteering and the achievements of young volunteers. The certificates that are awarded in recognition for undertaking uh, 10, 25, 50, 100, 200 and 500 hours of volunteering are signed by either the First Minister or the Deputy First Minister. And I've previously had the pleasure of awarding Salter certificates to young people from schools such as Harlow and St Macher Academies, to a young man who was supporting older people with their IT skills at the Silver City Surfers, and on a number of occasions to young people who have been helping disabled Aberdonians. And yesterday, the Power of Youth Day, the Lord Provost of uh, Aberdeen, David Cameron, and the Aberdeen Council of Voluntary Organisations presented a Saltair Summit Award signed by our First Minister, John Swinney, to Lucas McKenzie for 500 hours of volunteering with Future Choices, a charity which supports disabled people in the Granite City. And I'm sure that everyone in the Chamber will join me in congratulating Lucas on this superb achievement. Aberdeen has also led the way in acknowledging our volunteer stalwarts with the annual Celebrate Aberdeen Parade and Awards, the brainchild of Morvan McKenzie, who wanted to recognise, thank and celebrate our city's third sector organisations, community groups and volunteers. Volunteering, though, isn't just a nice thing to have. It has real economic and societal benefits too. My Hame Toon benefits greatly from the contribution of over 80,000 volunteers, giving an incredible 6.2 million hours of help every year. Their volunteering impacts on every aspect of life in Aberdeen, with an overall social return on investment for volunteering in my city of 14 to 1. In other words, for every pound invested in volunteering uh, there is a £14.12 cumulative economic, societal and public health return. As such, it's 
critically important that we in this chamber recognise the contribution of volunteers and do what we can to support them. An important part of that support is the Volunteering Action Plan for Scotland, co-created by the Scottish Government and Volunteer Scotland. And the Volunteering Action Plan aims to create a Scotland where everyone can volunteer more often and throughout their lives. And the Action Plan has four main goals. To increase volunteering participation by focusing on non-volunteers and lapsed volunteers, and especially those who will gain most benefit. It also is there to widen access to volunteering by understanding and reducing the barriers to participation and supporting community-based placemaking activities. It's also uh, there to listen to volunteers by ensuring that the volunteer voice is heard and that volunteers help make the decisions uh, that affect them. And it also provides great experiences whereby volunteers feel supported, valued and recognised for their contribution. And I'm sure that we all want to wish the Action Plan success in increasing volunteering in our country. Finally, uh, President Officer, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, to thank volunteers from organisations that I've met with recently, from Aberdeen Football Club Community Trust, We Too, Aberdeen Cyrenians, and there are too many more to mention. So my gratitude extends to all of the volunteers in Aberdeen uh, and across Scotland for their selfless service, their dedication and their invaluable contribution to our society. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we now move to the open debate. I now call uh, Alexander Stewart to be followed by Martin Whitfield. Uh, around four minutes, Mr Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to be able to speak in today's debate, uh, marking the 40th anniversary of Volunteers Week, and thank Kevin Stewart for bringing this important debate to the Chamber this evening. Volunteers make a vital contribution to services and uh, communities up and down the length of the country, and it's only right that Parliament has the opportunity to express these Volunteers provide benefits for so many communities across Scotland and it can be a truly rewarding experience for individuals who give up their time and their talents to support. The impact of volunteering can be seen across all sectors of society and we have heard some important examples of that already this evening from Kevin Stewart. The Fraser of Allender Institute has highlighted that volunteering organisations make huge contributions to different areas of our economy, and I welcome their new project, which aims to identify the true scale of volunteering across the United Kingdom, presiding officer. But regardless of the raw numbers, members need to look at some of the huge gaps that would be left in communities if we did not have these volunteers providing that work. And we know that volunteering is an important part of the fight against loneliness here. Uh, and we, the survey has shown that most common types of informal volunteering was supporting those who were at risk of loneliness. And we know that the support that they receive uh, is so important. And Age Scotland have identified that half of those over the age of 50 have sometimes struggled with loneliness, presiding officer. But the rates of informal volunteering declining since the pandemic is an important issue and we need to look at and encourage individuals to support uh, volunteering and to take up that. But there is an issue, Presiding Officer. You know, Disclosure Scotland uh, are potentially introducing fees uh, for processing PVGs and applications for volunteers. Now, that could have a massive impact on some sectors if that goes through. And I know there's consultation taking place, but it would be good to get some views from the Minister in her closing remarks. Organisations like Men's Shed are, are, are a fantastic organisation that is supported by many volunteers. And I've been very lucky uh, to have a number of these across my region uh, within Forth Valley uh, and in the Wee County. Uh, and these organisations provide support uh, to individuals and communities. Uh, and we wouldn't have that type of support and volunteering if they were uh, not being able to be run. So I welcome the Scottish Government has finally accepted that the, the numerous calls to restore funding to Men's Shed will help uh, to support over over 
100 sheds and 10,000 members across this. But despite the long-term funding for these organisations, it still remains the need uh, for us to ensure that we have volunteer-led organisations can continue to be viable and the assets that they fight against and loneliness and isolation are already there. And we've identified that, uh, presiding officer. Volunteering uh, in so many sectors, from so many organisations and so many areas within uh, our communities and our constituencies show what the benefits are uh, for individuals giving of their time and of their talent to ensure that they provide some services in their communities. So in conclusion, Presiding Officer, the hard work and the dedication of volunteers is so important to organisations and projects in every corner of Scotland. Their work uh, is, is so fundamental. It's part of our fabric, it's part of our society, and it's right that we celebrate them here today, uh, because that's so important that we give them uh, the, the opportunity, but we also give them the celebration, and we also give them the thanks for all they do to support our communities right up and down Scotland. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, Mr Stewart. And I call Martin Whitfield to be followed by Marie McNair around four minutes, Mr Whitfield. I am very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer, and it is a pleasure to follow Alexander Stewart and his contribution, and also to extend my thanks to Kevin Stewart for facilitating this debate this evening on what is the 40th anniversary of Volunteers Week. One can think back to those first volunteers 40 years ago who were perhaps teenagers, even maybe pre-teenagers, who are still volunteering, still organising and still selflessly, selflessly giving of their time. According to the Scottish Household Survey in 2022, 46% of respondents had taken part in some form of volunteering in the previous 12 months. And in East Lothian, between 2015 and 2019, 33% of adults volunteered formally through volunteers contributing 3.1 million hours of volunteering. I want to take the opportunity to look and speak um, to the young people who volunteer, because we have seen between 2019 and 2022 a reduction from 49% down to 37% of young people who do formal volunteering, and a reduction from 25% down to 18% for those doing informal volunteering. But of course that period of time straddled COVID. It straddled a change in the expectations on young people and indeed showed a difference in the challenges that our young people face. And it is to those 37% and to those 18% who still volunteer that I want to extend my thanks because the work that they do um, in helping other people, not just young people, but old people with food deliveries, with befriending, with just chatting, with shopping, with being there, with litter picks, is a phenomenal contribution and shows a great asset to what they will become as they grow up into adult life. I'd like to take the opportunity to highlight our galas, um, particularly in the south of Scotland, where young people sometimes slightly forced by their parents, come together to celebrate a week, and in particularly usually on a Saturday, and I will make mention of Preston Pan's Gala this Saturday, which means it will probably rain, so my apologies to door knockers who want to go out on that day, and the way that they bring, even through the rain, a massive smile as they travel around the town, celebrating the joy of being young, celebrating the joy of what they can offer. And as local authority budgets become overstretched and community centres are forced to close, and to echo Alexander Stewart's comments, the challenges of just volunteering is, is getting greater. We do need to look to the Scottish Government. We do need to look to this place. We do need to look to our local authorities to do as much as they can to facilitate the ease of volunteering while doing so in a safe environment. And in conclusion, as is right, because I do want to thank all of the volunteers across the south of Scotland and also those who help organise the volunteers to make mention of the lunch clubs at the Penny Pit Trust um, around East Lothian, which do, does so much. The volunteer befrienders at the Berwickshire Housing Association Befriend Project. Keep the Heed, a marvellous mental health cafe in Trenent, North Berwick and Haddington. To those that walk our streets of Trenent as the Trenent Wombles, to those that organise the tea dancers in North Berwick, the Eldon Housing Association with the Cyrenians and the older people active lives in Peebles, Galashiels and Hoyk. I want to express my thanks to all of them, because without those volunteers, day-to-day -day life would just be that little bit harder. And with volunteers, watching them work, sometimes participating, it brings a smile 
And that's what today and tomorrow should be about. I'm grateful. Thank you, Mr Whitfield. I now call Marie McNair to be followed by Beatrice Wishart. Around four minutes, Ms McNair. Thank you, President Officer. Can I congratulate my colleague Kevin Stewart for skewing this incredibly important debate? Volunteers are the backbone of our communities, and this week gives us the chance to recognise, celebrate and thank our incredible volunteers for all they contribute to our local communities. And this year is extra special given it is the 40th anniversary of Volunteers Week. Today we celebrate this milestone and pay gratitude to the volunteers in our constituencies. I have had the privilege of meeting so many volunteers in my constituency over my three years as MSP and a number of years as a councillor before this, so I know just how hard they work. And can I remind members uh, of my registered interests as a former councillor? And as I have so many outstanding volunteers in my constituency, a four-minute speech is unfortunately not enough time to name them all, presiding officer. But I'll have a go, so I'll name just a few of them. Uh, my sincere thanks uh, go to the volunteers of Oakopatrick Food Parcels, Mogai and Bloom, Damier Barclay Church Community Pantry, and Improving Lives, Faithly Food Share, Bearsden and Bloom, Golden Friendships, Claybank Menshed, Claybank Asbestos Group, Mogai and Bearsden Menshed, Azaro Community Initiative, Claybank Group Holidays, West and Bartonshire Citizen Advice Bureau, The Recycle Room, Mogai Older People's Welfare Committee, uh, Clyde Shop Mobility, Flourishing Faith Fleet, Stepping Stones, and so many more. And I would also like to thank uh, some of my volunteers who have sadly passed in my community, who gave everything to their cause, Bob Dickey and Hope Robertson of the Clybank Asbestos Group. You will forever be remembered as stalwarts of the campaign for truth and justice for asbestos victims and dedicated volunteers. The contribution volunteers make is often unseen, but never goes unnoticed by me. And I know how hard they all work and the level of dedication, commitment and passion they bring to our towns. The work volunteers in my constituency do has never been more vital, so it is time we celebrate them for all they do. Volunteering also is not just beneficial for our communities. It has been shown to improve volunteering uh, well-being too, and it can help people gain viable skills and experiences and boost their confidence and even job prospects. In my constituency of Claybank and Mogai, there has always been a community spirit of looking out for one another, and the volunteers in the area harness that spirit. The volunteers truly come from all walks of life and may have different goals, be that providing food parcels to ensuring no one in our community goes hungry, helping those with disabilities access services and mobility scooters, litter picking and protecting our environment or providing practical and emotional support and spaces to tackle social isolation. But they all share one thing in common. They aim to make positive difference for the lives of others. Volunteering uh, also is a ripple effect beyond just services volunteers provide. These acts of kindness and service inspire others to give back and help foster that community spirit that keeps our towns going. I know of many individuals who have shown and chosen to give back to community after experiencing support and kindness from local volunteers. Even if it is just a couple of hours a week or month, it can make such a difference, and I know many groups in my constituency are always looking for more help, so please reach out uh, to them if this interests you. Every contribution matters, no matter how small. So, to conclude, presiding officer, to the volunteers in Claybank, Mogai and Bearsden North, past and present, I am forever grateful to you for what you have done for our constituents. Your selflessness dedication and passion to help others and improve our communities is true, truly awe-inspiring. You have touched countless lives and your communities are a better place for you being in it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms McNair. I now call Beatrice Wishart to be followed by Claire Hockey. Around four minutes, Ms Wishart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am pleased to speak today to mark the 40th anniversary of Volunteers Week and I thank Kevin Stewart for bringing this debate to the Chamber. There are many positives to volunteering, and it can provide opportunities for people to develop new skills, improve self-confidence, and make new friends. We know volunteering can improve health and well-being, and strengthen feelings of connection to others in the community. 
Across Scotland, more than one million people volunteered in 2022, representing over a fifth of all adults in Scotland, taking advantage of the many volunteering opportunities available to contribute to their communities. 89% of voluntary organisations in Scotland are local and 36% are in rural areas. In my constituency, there's a strong culture of community service, evidenced by the <coughs> Excuse me, evidenced by the 272 registered charities, three community interest companies and 239 community groups in the islands. Umbrella Group Voluntary Action Shetland play an important role supporting organisations across the isles and searching on their website for volunteering opportunity brings up nearly 150 results avail available right now. There's a diverse range of roles, from coordinating charity collection boxes for Guide Dogs Scotland to serving food at a daily charity lunch club or marshalling at the weekly park run event. This snapshot illustrates the variety of skill sets volunteers can use and learn through volunteering. There are many more inspiring examples of Shetland's community spirit being demonstrated through volunteering, fundraising and community action from the life-saving work of RNLI crews or Dogs Against Drugs to the 100 Christmas dinners cooked by volunteers from Sound Primary School, from the volunteers training young people to sail tall ships to the people volunteering their time to fundraise for local charities. There are many people giving time and energy to the causes they care about. I recently met with the Isles' first youth-led charity, Open, and heard about the work that they are doing for their peers for young people in Shetland. Voluntary Action Shetland runs volunteering awards as well as the National Saltire Awards Scheme for young people, and these schemes recognise the important contributions to volunteering and inspire others to get involved. Community life is dependent on people giving up their spare time. I can't think how the biggest date in the Shetland calendar, Up Helia, would function without the legions of people of all ages taking on a myriad of diverse roles from torch making and baking that contribute, to so much, to contribute so much to make such spectacular events run smoothly. But, presiding officer, that's not to say there are no challenges facing the voluntary sector. Recent reports from the Scottish Council for Voluntary Organisations show that 76% of organisations report an element of organisational finance in their top three challenges, citing rising costs and difficulty fundraising. Over half of organisations are also concerned about energy prices and significantly more are concerned about the impact of those prices on the people and communities they serve, with 70% believing that financial hardships become worse. While the third sector and volunteers rose to the challenge of the pandemic, showing how communities can pull together when facing difficulties, as we continue to recover, organisations report that volunteers have not always returned, at the same time, demand for services from the charity sector has increased, placing pressure on voluntary organisations. So voluntary organisations in the third sector in general need to be provided with as much certainty as possible through funding from local and national government that recognises the valuable contribution they make to Scottish society. And in concluding, presiding officer, I would like to thank all volunteers in Shetland and indeed across Scotland for dedicating their time and skills to their communities. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Wishart. I now call Claire Hawkey to be followed by Jeremy Ball for around four minutes. Ms Hawkey. Thank you, President Officer. And can I also offer my thanks to Kevin Stewart for bringing this motion for debate. Volunteers Week, the 40th anniversary of which we're now marking, gives us all the opportunity to celebrate the invaluable, inspirational and often unsung contribution that volunteers give to our communities ranging from providing support pre-birth through childhood into adulthood and then into older age. Volunteers improve the lives of individuals, families and communities at every stage of life. President Officer, the COVID pandemic shone a stark light on how fragile communities can be and how vulnerable some of our citizens are, as well as how much we all crave and need connection to others. Research estimates that 12.4 million people across the UK participated in volunteer activity at the height of the COVID-19 crisis, and of these, 3.8 million had volunteered for the first time. In my Rutherglen constituency, the Blantyre Official Coronavirus Support Group swung into action alongside the many volunteers from Halfway, Cambus Lang and Rutherglen, coordinated by Healthy and Happy Community Development Trust and LEAP. 
delivering food and prescriptions to those who were shielding or who couldn't get out, providing friendship and support through phone calls, as well as a myriad of other practical assistance to locals. Whilst those very dark days, um, the number of people who stepped up to help and assist their family, their friends and their neighbours was quite remarkable. The challenge now is to try and harness the benefits of this community and volunteering spirit to further promote co social cohesion, maintain community resilience and further improve the lives of others. President officer, unsurprisingly, I want to use the remainder of my time in this debate to pay tribute to a host of voluntary groups in my constituency, from Bonnie Blantyre at one end of my constituency, who have done incredible work sprucing up and greening the town, including creating a community garden, to the Rutherglen Rotary Club at the other end, which, amongst other things, fundraise for local and international causes, including building schools and toilets in Africa and Asia. Between them, geographically, there are organisations like Grow 73, Burnhill Action Group, Friends of Cambus Lang Park and Home Hill Woods, to name but a few, who have created and nurtured green spaces for people and wildlife to use and thrive. President Officer, although many voluntary groups are unique to the areas that they are based, our communities also benefit from national volunteering organisations. Scout, Cub, Guide and Brownie leaders provide invaluable opportunities to local children and young people, and many have done so for many years. And to name but two in my constituency, Nigel Macdonald and Claire Quinn, who have for years given hours of their time to help local kids develop new skills and to have fun. Local sports organisations would not exist without the dedication of many local people. Coaches and volunteers, including Jimmy Whelan at Blantyre Soccer Academy, Andy Rundle at Eastfield FC and Colin Henderson at Rutherglen Amateur Swimming Club, all provide children, young people and adults with the opportunities that only sport can give. And in my constituency, churches like Rutherglen West and Wardlow Hill and Blantyre Old Parish Church run warm hubs and cafes which act as social hubs for local people all run by local volunteers. And at St Colin Kills Church, bereavement support and dementia support groups, again run by volunteers, provide a lifeline to many local people. And whilst I have the privilege and pleasure of trying to improve my constituency as an MSP, there are so many people who do it voluntarily out of the love of their communities, including those on community councils in Blantyre, Halfway, Cambus Lang, Burnside and Rutherglen. And to take Cambus Lang Community Council for an example, they've been behind projects such as the Bank Hub on Cambus Lang Main Street, which has been a godsend since all the major banks left the town. They have been behind the streetscape improvements and are included in a partnership which has created the Clyde Cycle Park. I can mention many more individuals and organisations local who make my constituents a better place to live, work, grow, um, but at times against me. So, presiding officer, every single organisation I have named and those that I have not are so successful due to the individuals behind them. Individuals who, or whose only motivation is to improve the communities we live in. And I want to thank each and every one of them for what they do. Thank you, Ms Hockey. And I call the final speaker in the open debate, Jeremy Balfour, around four minutes. Mr uh, Balfour. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. And can I also uh, thank not only Kevin Stewart, but all the speakers that have taken part in the debate so far tonight. Uh, sometimes consensual politics does work. And I think tonight has been, well, hopefully consensual, at least until I speak. Um, I have the uh, uh, privilege of being the uh, convener of the cross-party group on volunteering, and I would welcome any member, if you would like to join the group, uh, to come along. And it has been, as I've done this for the last couple of years, uh, a really interesting, inspiring to hear what is happening across Scotland. Uh, volunteering helps the volunteer, as well as helping the project or community that we do. And so there is a two-way benefit, both for individuals and for organisations. Um, when I was uh, in hospital at the end of last year, beginning of this year, um, our tea and coffee at the morning and at dinner was served by volunteers who came in. But far more important than the tea and coffee and biscuits was the conversations that we had, particularly uh, with patients who were having very few visitors. Often it was the only conversation they would have out with the nursing staff on a daily basis. We've heard many inspiring stories uh, by those who have spoken this evening. 
But we do, and we have to face that, we do face a problem here in Scotland. For the first time uh, last year, we fell below one million people volunteering in Scotland. Uh, during the pandemic, one of the few positives out of it was the way that individuals did volunteer and get involved in the communities. But as we have returned to a bit more normal or normality, people have been pressed... If I just finish this one sentence, then I'm very happy to. Uh, people have been pressed because of work commitments, family commitments, maybe not to be able to volunteer in the same way. And it's something I think all of us uh, across all parties need to reflect on. Happy to give way to Mr. Yeah, I, I thank Mr. Balfour for giving way, President Officer, and I don't want to get overly political in what has been a very good debate. But I think we have to recognise uh, what some volunteers have faced in their own lives of late. And speaking to a number of folk uh, who volunteered previously, they're unable to do so now because they've had to take on second jobs uh, and to make ends meet during the cost of living crisis. I think we have to take cognizance of that. I'll leave it at that. Uh, and I don't want to get too political over this, but I think we have to recognise what today's world is bringing folk. Jeremy Balfour. Uh, I absolutely accept the uh, member's uh, comments, Deputy President Officer. I think there are a number of reasons. There's been quite a work done by SCVO in regard to this, but I think we want to address it at this point before the numbers fall any further. And I think there's a challenge for uh, also those businesses to allow people time off to do the volunteering. Because volunteers often are the engine that keeps the third sector moving here in Scotland. Uh, the one issue I would like to raise with the Minister, and perhaps she could go away and reflect on it and come back uh, to us, is in regard to the PVG application fee waiver. She will be aware that the third sector are deeply concerned about this financially and what it will do to volunteers. And I do hope that the government will look at this afresh and give some reassurance to the organisations involved. Finally, I, I want to finish by thanking the hundreds of thousands of people that volunteer here in the Lovians. Um, I know tonight there will be cub groups, scout groups, so many other groups meeting, and the only reason they're meeting is because of volunteers that are giving up their time. So I think we can all unite tonight in thanking people for what they do across our country. And I look forward to seeing more people volunteer here in Scotland as we go forward. Thank you, Deputy General. Sir. Thank you, Mr Balfour. I now invite Coca Stewart to respond to the debate. Minister, around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you very much to Kevin Stewart for bringing uh, this debate on Volunteers Week. Um, I have been uh, delighted and heartened to hear... Oh. Will I continue, Presiding Officer? Um, I have been delighted and heartened to hear the contributions from all the members across the Chamber and I'd like to thank Kevin Stewart for bringing uh, this debate to highlight uh, the contribution that volunteers play. As we mark the 40th anniversary of Volunteers Week, it is clear that each and every one of us in this chamber recognises the value of volunteering. Um, and as I said um, during my contribution, I'm going to uh, refer to some of the uh, organisations that were mentioned by my colleagues, uh, which have been right across the length and breadth um, of, the of the country. Very importantly, I want to take this opportunity to put my wholehearted thanks to all those who give up their time freely to help others. Volunteers are truly the backbone of not only the third sector, but of our society as a whole. And I, along with uh, the Scottish Government, um, hugely value the contributions they make to the lives of people across Scotland. The experience of the last four years have demonstrated the powerful impact of volunteers during times of crisis, the pandemic, and Claire Hawhey mentioned the contribution of the volunteers that stepped up in amazing fashion to respond during that time. Ukraine was another opportunity where volunteers came forward, severe weather events, and of course helping out during the cost of living crisis. But we all know that volunteers are not just there for during times 
times of crisis. They are there for every day of our communities. Their unpaid efforts help us to address some of the biggest challenges we face, from mental and physical health to social isolation and loneliness. Um, I think that Kevin Stewart mentioned community radios, which I think play uh, an enormous role in connecting and entertaining communities across uh, Scotland and locally. We, the, the unpaid efforts help us to address some of the biggest challenges we face, as I've mentioned, and they've, ta they've shown time and time again their extraordinary commitment and huge enthusiasm in helping others. Um, Marie McNair mentioned uh, a very impressive list across Clyde Bank, Mulgay and Bearsden North of the many volunteer groups uh, and opportunities. And she also highlighted the kind kindness and the generosity of spirit that is involved in volunteering. And without volunteers, many community activities simply wouldn't take place. Uh, Martin Whitfield raised the issue of gala days, where many, many people go along uh, to enjoy them. And I do wish him uh, very good weather for the gala that's uh, <laughs> going to happen in Preston Pans, I believe. <laughs> There is no doubt that uh, volunteering brings communities together and helping people feel valued and part of something good. Uh, many, many benefits, and I recognise some of the challenges that have been mentioned uh, by my um, colleagues. Um, I think that uh, Mr Stewart and uh, Mr Balfour mentioned uh, the uh, the PVG fees, and what I wanted to do was to reassure them that uh, whilst I am grateful for everyone who has engaged with Disclosure Scotland on the recent consultation regarding the future fee policies, work is underway to apply vital feedback, and feedback will be taken from today as well, um, to, uh, to help with the policy development work. Um, there has been no decision made of yet, and what I can say is that we will take the feedback that has been given uh, in tonight's debate. I also wanted to, before I ran out of time, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned everybody. Um, Beatrice Wishart uh, talked about the valuable work that Volunteer in Action at Shetland do and the challenges that they seem to be managing in a brilliant fashion to uh, the important role they play, I suppose, in coordinating so many groups across islands and that rural challenge. And I think that uh, I'd like to pay tribute to the work that they do. Uh, she talked about uh, funding um, regarding, so regarding fair funding, um, in May 2024, I believe that the Cabinet Secretary did write to the Social Justice and Social Security Committee to report on the progress against the government's expectations on fairer funding commitments. Um, so I would refer her to that and uh, please I would encourage her to come back to me for any further information on that. So um, the, uh, yeah, I just wanted to take the opportunity to uh, highlight the government's commitment uh, to volunteering and colleagues mentioned the challenge of recruiting volunteers. So the Scottish Government um, has the Scotland, Scotland's Volunteering Action Plan. This 10-year living plan seeks to increase participation and reduce barriers to volunteering. Volunteer Scotland are leading the implementation of the plan with the combined efforts of the voluntary sector and partners, and the plan will help to create a Scotland where everyone can volunteer more often and throughout their lives. It acknowledges the reach of volunteering and the vital role of volunteers in the delivery of services across Scotland. Presiding officer, I will bring my remarks to a close because I see that time is pressing. But just to finish, um, I continue to be inspired by our wonderful volunteers across the country who go above and beyond to support others. So directly to them, through you, presiding officer, whatever volunteering they do, I hope that they know that their help, support and care for others makes a wonderful difference in their lives. And what better way to mark that than the 40th year of Volunteer Week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.